people cannot imagine going to a 9 to 5 job people can't imagine going uh, going to hey i can't travel i have my a young kid at home or have an elderly person to take care of home i can't travel i can't be away for 8 9 hours at a stretch right so all these the regular office the regular way of thinking about work is so constraining right for many people right that we don't sometimes we don't realize that right and and, and being a part of corporate and working with all these customers kind of made me realize that uh, this remote giving space on demand is so much more liberating for people right it is not just about a space to go and work it's about reimagining uh, their own professional careers in, in ways that they've never been able to do before hello everyone ashok here thank you for tuning in to this 31st episode of indian startup stories a podcast thriving to bring out experiences and insights from entrepreneurs across india today our guest is sham sundar nagarajan founder and ceo of go floaters a company that believes that the future of office is anywhere and everywhere go floaters solves the problem of setting office space for startups freelancers or independent consultants and more in this episode sham shares his background long stint in the it industry how he turned the problem into an or how he turned the problem into an opportunity to kick start his entrepreneurial journey enabling startups and freelancers and changing the perspective of office space in a completely different way and much more valuable information for you to take away so without further ado let's jump in hi shyam thank you for coming on indian startup stories today welcome hey ashok thanks for having me and i'm um, super excited to do this one with you wonderful pleasure is mine uh, please share about your background in uh, academics and the, your initial career days sashyam uh so i'm i'm uh, i'm an old uh, wine in a new bottle when it comes to uh, being entrepreneur right so uh, mm-hmm. i i became an entrepreneur in 2017 after roughly around working uh, in the it industry for almost 18 years right split between roughly between infosys and cognizant so after mm-hmm. like uh, Uh, climbing through the ropes or climbing through the ladder of a corporate world and kind of reaching to the top wherever i wanted to be right uh, then like they say right you reach the top and then you are lonely there so i felt lonely i felt a little bit uh, 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 how do i say right as uh, uh, uncomfortable in that position i said hey i'm i'm going to put myself into something more uncomfortable than i've ever been and that kind of uh, mm-hmm. made me become an entrepreneur uh, my educational i'm i'm a, i'm a chennai born i love uh, i'm a tamilian I love the sambar vadas and uh, love the dosas like any so, so, and and filter coffee uh, before i forget mm-hmm. like any uh, south indian wood uh, and i studied my uh, my schooling was all in chennai then i did my uh, bachelor's from iit varanasi uh, then i joined infosys uh, mm-hmm. worked for uh, four years there uh, then i took a break uh, did my masters in software systems from bits pilani uh, then i joined back cognizant uh, and uh, roughly worked for cognizant for 14 years um and then like like i said in 2017 decided to uh, uh jump into the entrepreneurial uh, stream of uh, work okay and uh, in 2014 uh, one of the life changing moments uh, was that i got uh, uh, i got selected as a fulbright scholar <clears throat> so was one of the 12 indians uh, who were in carnegie mellon university for a rough period of 4 months uh, where we have we were kind of put into a batch of uh, uh entrepreneurs plus business people plus leaders from all over the world there were around 26 people of its 12 from india and uh, and we were kind of taken through uh, uh management slash innovation and entrepreneurship as the focus area by some of the top uh, thinkers of the world right management gurus of the world so that uh, four month period i would say was a game changing experience for me and uh, uh, and and probably accelerated my uh, i mean my Uh, entrepreneurial jump and say okay that's fantastic pretty nice background on both the uh, educational side and also your professional uh, please share about information on what is go floaters what do you do what is it about yeah yeah i'll do that uh, first up i'll tell you what go floaters is not uh, because <laughs> yeah, that's a question uh, uh, it's better better to kind of say uh, hey i'm i'm I, before i before i say who i am I, it's better to i i feel that it's better to say who we are not so uh, gofundus is not a co-working provider like a we work or a co-work or 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 an idiwan springboard so we are not that right uh, neither are we an aggregator of co-working places like uh, some of other some of the other people there which, which i don't want to take names right uh, uh, so having said that uh, who we are is like gofloaters is is the office for distributed and remote teams uh, so we help uh, teams 
uh, to work from anywhere, uh, employees or team members to kind of be productive wherever they are, whenever they are. Uh, and we do this by uh, through technology, right? So we've created uh, a curated marketplace of work and meeting spaces that spans across 21 cities in India today and uh, with over 2,100 spaces to offer. And uh, these are spaces mm-hmm. that people, employees of companies uh, of any size, right? It could be like a two-member company to a 500-member company, right? So employees of companies can actually uh, leverage to one, uh, in, and specifically in the post-COVID world, uh, break the monotony of work from home, right? Uh, break the loneliness challenges they have while, while having prolonged work from home stints. Uh, find their focus uh, time, right? Spend like quality four to five hours of uh, in working and getting things across rather than kind of battling to manage time between work and home and, and all of that. And uh, and last but not the least, uh, uh, humans are social beings, right? And, and uh, being out of office and not meeting your colleagues is act, uh, whether we agree it or not uh, is actually making a dent in company cultures and it is making a dent in how we as individuals kind of work as a team right uh, and we help solve all those challenges for companies right that's what we do today uh, mm-hmm. and uh, we've been in existence for the last three and a half years obviously three and a half years back nobody thought about remote working and work from anywhere in a big way uh, but me mm-hmm. and my co-founder had an irrational thought that the world is going to become remote uh, whether you whether you like it or not, remote world world is moving towards remote uh, at a steady pace, right? And we said in ten years from now uh, there'll be a lot more remote workers than they were like three years back. But thanks to COVID, a lot of things have been gotten accelerated uh, uh, there, mm. right? So that's that's basically who we are, and uh, yeah. So and, and we already work with like hundreds of companies, uh, small companies. We we proud pride ourselves in working with a lot of early stage startups and bootstrap startups where. Uh, uh, one, obviously, we provide them with the office infrastructure on demand when they need it, where they need it. At the same time, we're able to also mm-hmm. able to free themselves uh, from uh, paying hefty security deposits and and, and uh, uh, obnoxious rents uh, to to office space providers in getting their office. Right? So that's that's uh, so we're happy to be in the game of helping startups finding their feet and growing uh, with a flexi office space model that we offer. Okay, yeah, that's that's pretty good start. Uh, you bring up uh, the co-working space style, uh, but actually mixing up with the Airbnb concept, um, yeah. it's a good one with the social aspects as well. Nice, right. yeah, yeah. And COVID yeah. has, of course, must have been a, a boosting for your business because now everyone is looking for a remote. Absolutely, it's a, it's a, uh, so I uh, I'll be beaten up to say this, but at least for the business, it's a COVID has been a godsend. From all personal angles, obviously, it's been it's been a terrorizing time for all of us. But at least mm, yeah. uh, from, a, from an adoption of remote and, and for people to even think beyond a brick and mortar structure, I think it's been it's been an eye opener for many business owners and HR people that they can think uh, work can happen outside of your headquarters is something that people were finding it hard to realize before. True, true. So how did it all begin? Uh, the idea mm-hmm. of a Go Floaters, uh, where did it start? Um, uh, kind of it's so first, first and foremost, GoFloaters is not the startup that I began. Uh, the moment I became an entrepreneur, I was actually solving some of the problem. Uh, I was actually uh, solving the problem of uh, insurability and ease of buying insurance for companies. That's the first startup that I began. So it was an insure tech startup. Uh, uh, in short, I was trying to like for for simplicity of reasons, uh, I would say we were building the policy bazaar uh, for companies, right? For commercial insurance, right? That's what we were trying, mm-hmm. uh, me and my team were, were trying to do, right? And while trying to solve this problem is when, uh, so I was meeting a lot of uh, other entrepreneurs, I was meeting mentors, I was meeting, uh, I was interviewing a lot of people for, uh, for, for, for the startup, right? And I was trying to talk to a lot of business owners to kind of look at uh, validating my problem, uh, uh, assumption of the problem that I had in terms of insurance and why comp- why businesses in India don't take up insurance and all that, right? So I was kind of, uh, probably crazily meeting like at least two three meetings in a day, day that I was doing for like the last the first six months of me becoming an entrepreneur, right? And um, uh, and and I I the problem of not having a drop in workspace wherever I went uh, was actually uh, starting to grow in me, right? So I was actually dropping mm-hmm. into if, if uh, for a meeting I would kind of call somebody to a cafe coffee day or I would call them to a Starbucks. Right, and we'll have a meeting there, right? And sometimes I've had the issue that I, I call somebody in for a meeting at Starbucks, but then we walk into the Starbucks and, and the, the place is already full, right? Or AC okay. is not running in the place and 
we barely can sit in that place because you're sweating profusely and chennai heat is mm. something that <laughs> you you can't get away from right uh, so yeah. or uh, or the fact that i was spending like tons of money in just uh, like 1000 rupees per meeting just to buy a coffee neither did i like oh, the yeah. coffee nor the other person like the coffee but we just had to <laughs> it was like i mean it was yeah. like the, you had to be the clown when you had to be in the circus right you had to wear that you had mm-hmm. to have a coffee mug and that's that's how you were part of the, <laughs> that's how you were like you were not an alien in that place right and uh, mm-hmm. something that uh, kind of uh, didn't make sense to me right it didn't add up right why am i spending so much money for a coffee that i did not, that i did not want right and sometimes getting uh, getting bad a look from the waiters if i don't order the coffee or you don't top up your coffee mug they look out looked at you like as though you were stealing uh, something from them uh, then i was starting looking look at solutions hey why is why is uh, why are people on the go uh, are not able to find uh, find spaces to sit and work or sit and have a meeting on the go right why is so i started mm-hmm. to talk to co working places and say hey can you give me a space uh for a few hours right can i can i come and use your space for a few hours is it no no you can take a space on a monthly rent right but i said i'm not going to mm-hmm. be in this location every day right i'm i'm meeting somebody in north chennai i'm meeting somebody else in south chennai some other day right i need i need something that i can tap into everywhere right uh, but then i didn't have an option there um so i came up with a hack uh, i i tied up with three cafes in chennai one in south of chennai one in center of chennai and one in north of chennai and i told them to hey i'll come and drop into your place i will not order your food don't force me to order your food but i'll pay you a cover charge for the space that i use right give me give me wifi give me power power uh, you don't even need to give me wifi just give me a, a neat table uh, that's cleaned up uh, give me a power socket to plug in my laptop and give me don't disturb me for food that's all i ask but i'll pay you a cover charge mm-hmm. to use the space right and uh, after uh, surprisingly many three three i mean uh, after a few conversations three cafes agreed to doing this right because they saw the value what is it going to what is it going to do right i mean my, anyway my space is empty it's okay somebody comes and uses the space and uh, so in fact one of the cafe owner said like i will do this but the only thing that you have to promise me that you have to sit by the glass that's facing the road mm. so that somebody walking by sees that this cafe is a happening place right if you <laughs> if you promise to sit by the glass right uh, and work uh, keep your laptop on work there or have your meeting there i am happy to provide you the space right because from the outside i don't want to i don't want people to kind of pop, see people into my cafe and see this is a empty a graveyard right mm. so i said okay right i'm i'm happy to sit with the glass uh, glass pane right yeah. uh, and that's how it started right it started as a personal hack right uh, it is it is not a business it is not a startup i was just using this uh, this hack for my own uh, meetings and uh, and slowly when i uh, when i was meeting other entrepreneurs I, uh, my friends other friends who were entrepreneurs i used to tell them that, hey this is what i do right uh like any person who has come up with a hack you are proud to show it off to other people so i was showing it off to other people saying that hey this is the hack that i do right uh, what do you guys do right i mm-hmm. see i'm smart i do this right <laughs> and all these guys started to say hey this is awesome right we are also spending the same amount of money and uh, wasting our time in going to a cafe coffee day or to a starbucks right why don't you guys let me why don't you let me in right i'm your friend <laughs> let me in into this hack and let me also use it right and that was my first epi- epiphany moment as they say right i mean it's not just you mm-hmm. solve it for yourself but then somebody else sees a value for that solution and somebody else wants also wants to leverage that right that was my first uh, epiphany moment to uh, kind of kind of they say uh, the bulb went and then said hey could this be a business right could this be could this be a problem that i solve for others right not just for myself but for others right but i was toiling with that idea because i was already committed to my first startup uh, so i was toiling with this i ran both of them in parallel for some time uh slowly like two friends became five friends five friends became 10 friends 20 friends started to use mm-hmm. what i was doing um then i went to my uh, one of my mentors uh, called sukumar and told sukumar sukumar uh, something happened right i'm i'm kind of uh, uh something interesting is happening with me i want to share this with you right and he said yeah why don't we meet up right so i shared this with him and he said that hey this is you, you might be onto something but you don't know whether it is going to be a business or not it could be an interesting idea mm-hmm. that you're doing right you're looking at mm-hmm. an office in a different way than uh, commercial real estate has been the way uh, commercial real estate is on, on the offer right but you are not another swiggy or you are not another zomato you are not another ola or uber right so you are solving you are providing a solution that doesn't exist today in the world so True. validate validate this uh, in the quickest possible way and cheapest possible way in fact he challenged me to don't spend a single rupee on this but go see whether people like this idea right so uh, so what i did basically this is on december 12th of 2017 i clearly remember the date 
when i met him okay uh, on uh, so what i did was the very next day i went and uh, uh, i spent a little bit of money though he asked me to spend zero money i went and bought a, a, a fancy number uh, from an idea uh, store i got a fancy number okay. uh, set up a business whatsapp <laughs> business account on that number and told every told my world of people saying that hey who are needs a space just message me on this whatsapp number i'll send you photographs i'll send you, send you the google maps link and if you like it i'll send you a payment link just pay for the space uh, through an insta mojo payment link and use the space right and that's okay. an experiment that i ran for almost like 3 months uh, and roughly in jan uh, 20 uh, or not jan maybe like in february is when i decided that uh, we by the time we had around 100 bookings through the whatsapp uh, number uh, that i had right so we had 100 bookings and i decided that that now is the time that uh, is to kind of make this the real thing right and and kind of spend okay. uh, energy and time on converting this into a business that that's that's how gofood has kind of happened nice it has all originated from your own problem and uh, you found your own community to start with wonderful i want to know about your co-founders and especially uh, getting to the details of uh, how are you managing go floaters uh, with uh, your co-founders being in a different country and you being in a very different place and uh, your business is purely remote and uh, it is targeting customers who are looking for a remote so it's it's, yeah. it's a kind of falling uh, you have bucketed all kind of remote aspects in your business so can you talk about uh, that please see so, i mean first and foremost i think uh, uh, i i i mean um, all of this is even happening only because uh, all of us in the team at gofooders truly believe in remote working right so uh, and mm-hmm. they, as they say right if you don't eat your own dog food right i mean you can't like preach to others and do something else inside your house right so uh, so mm-hmm. we we not only preach but we also follow remote working and and we are an example of our own right so at one point in time before covid uh, we were present in like our team members were spread across six cities right Uh, and two continents right my co-founder like you said he's from dallas in texas right uh, i'm from chennai and we had we, we, i had a developer from jodhpur i had a developer from erode uh, software developer from erode i had a team member from uh, uh, hyderabad uh, bangalore and uh, uh, i think we had uh, somebody even from Sivak- we even today we have somebody from sivakasi working from sivakasi so we were truly remote uh, uh, as a team right and we tru- we are still still are right and uh, to talk about my co-founder shivatsan um, he's somebody like uh, i've known him for uh, both of us actually entered uh, infosys on the same day right so we were part of the same mm-hmm. batch of people who joined uh, infosys right uh, okay. though i was in bangalore he was in chennai but then very soon after my training in bangalore i relocated back to chennai and uh, we both were in the same building at infosys so we worked together at projects together uh, so he somebody who who have known him for almost 20 years right uh, mm-hmm. so just the, the the date it was not a speed dating he went through which i met him right so i've known him for 20 years uh, we played cricket <laughs> together okay. we've gone to movies together uh, right we have uh, we've done night outs together to uh, deliver projects for our customers so so can somebody somebody who have known for quite some time right we have common friends uh, we have common colleagues and so on and so forth right so we both coming together on gofood has happened accidentally right so he was also mm-hmm. looking at uh, some change from his corporate world i was already into entrepreneurship and i was running my first startup uh, which was insurance insure tech startup at the point in time and uh, that's the time he was also deliberating on whether gofood should become a company or not right and uh, uh, as uh, as serendipity would have to have it uh shrivatsan uh, his last job uh, was at toptal right and he was working with a uh, global remote talent uh, and he was taking toptal is by the way like uh, toptal is a marketplace for the top of the top freelancing talent in the world right uh, and mm-hmm. he was a, he was a client partner at toptal taking gig economy and remote work to fortune 500 companies and convincing them why remote work is the way to go and how they should embrace uh, the freelancing economy and so on and so forth right so it kind of happened mm-hmm. it is it is a natural fit Uh, i was trying to kind of look at a fundamental problem that the freelancing economy was ha- having with respect to not having access to uh, productive professional workspaces which is on demand at the same time he was looking at solving the problem of how do you match supply and demand of uh, uh, workforce for companies right and uh, we just thought mm-hmm. that it's probably a good time to kind of come together and and solve this problem together okay that's nice can you share about how have you actually uh, started with your pricing model for go floaters and uh, how how has it evolved over the period of time right so this is something that uh, so thankful to sukumar again on this right because i we started with a, a very low key product right which is whatsapp and google sheet and that's it right 
so we were able to in those four months we were able to do a, do a lot of iterations on the pricing on the business model on the uh, uh, on the value proposition that we were giving to people and what kind of people do you want to actually even help right so we were able to a lot of do a lot of experiments because there's no legacy there's no technology that could not be changed overnight right so i mean uh, so the algorithm is all here right <laughs> it's a whatsapp number so algorithm of pricing and all that is in the head uh, between me and my co-founder so it was quite easy to kind of do the iterations so uh, hmm. so first and foremost since we started off with providing cafes or a, as a co-working space and an informal meeting space we actually had to find out what were willing people willing to pay for just getting the space right uh, because the comparison was hey i can go to a cafe coffee day order a coffee for uh, 100 rupees and 120 rupees uh, or go to starbucks which is little upscale and pay 150 rupees for a uh, for a frappuccino but then i can sit there uh, if i take a cold coffee i can probably sit there for 2 hours right i can not after 2 hours i can sit there and uh, keep sipping very slowly but still uh, occupy the seat so we we had to find out what were people willing to pay for just the space and the ambience and the wifi and the power where food was not a part of the equation right so we started at mm-hmm. 60 rupees per hour then we dropped it down to 55 rupees per hour then we actually eventually we dropped it down to 25 rupees per hour right uh, oh, okay. so uh, as the as the price point at which uh, uh, convincing right i we could convince the uh, majority of the people that this provided more value proposition to them than going to a starbucks or a cafe coffee day and order order for food right and initially obviously yeah. when we started off we were not looking at making like tons of money right it was not a profit uh, the intention was to see if this idea can actually even Uh, survive can it become a business right is there is there enough is there enough uh, demand for something like this right so we were kind of uh, trying to find like they say product market fit right i i, I don't want to misuse that word but that was the intention right to kind of find the find the right, uh, product market fit right so we were we did a lot of experiments to kind of find out uh, find the right uh, medium and finally we settled down on 35 rupees per hour as the uh, price point where uh, the space partners were happy we were happy and the customers were happy right so we kind of had to do a lot of experiments to come up with a price point at which it kind of started to make sense to everybody but obviously along mm-hmm. the way uh, we have had to course correct and we have to do a lot of other changes as well uh, but those were the mm-hmm. initial experiments that kind of taught us uh, taught us that uh, uh, how do you run such experiments and how do you kind of get the pulse and the feel of the customers and and again since we were a marketplace we had to keep both the supply and the demand happy right uh you can't win the game sure. uh, if one of them is happy and other other is pissed off with you right so we had to find the median where both of them were happy to play the game okay that's nice yeah you have uh, fluctuated a lot as similar to a uh, parking lot ticket uh, fair right yeah so and uh, we in fact uh, we had uh, we uh, so another example of a pricing experiment right? we actually had a uh, premium uh, economy and uh, or i don't know okay. exactly name but we had three ca- three levels of caf- three levels of cafes so if you went to the top end cafe then will be at some pricing if you went to the uh, uh, average cafe that will be with the pricing there will be an economy uh, and there will be a different mm-hmm. pricing right so we had premium business and economy or something like something like right like how airlines price it right so we even tried mm-hmm. off with that model right because hey why why should somebody pay more if they go to a a, 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 a little bit more more uh, of a uh, down to earth cafe right whereas somebody goes to a, a, a cafe which has been which has been done really well and has a great ambience they should probably pay more right so but that didn't work right we found that that, that didn't make sense to the uh, the person people who are using that right so we had to standardize it so we said across india irrespective of what kind of a space it is it's priced this way right and uh, okay. and we also had to figure out a logic to convince the space partners to do that right because somebody would say hey i i spent so much money on creating this ambience in my cafe i am in the heart of bangalore and mg road brigade road i pay so much for rent you can't you can't pitch me at the same level as somebody else who's in malaysia or right but so we mm-hmm. had to kind of play all the uh, uh, uh permutation combinations and kind of con- convincing everybody to kind of standardize on the on the rates as well okay yeah good amount of our research has gone there nice so how has the customer adoption been so far and uh, i know uh, post covid it has uh, people have started adopting to the remote working culture but uh, how has the trend uh, in your start and now yeah so it's, in the initial year it was a very slow uh, slow pick up i would say uh, because again like i said for the first four months we were ourselves experimenting and we ourselves were not sure of what we were doing uh, and actually finding out what's the actual value proposition can be that we can offer and who is it for right uh, then towards that towards the end of the first year only i would say frankly we kind of got a hang of 
who our customers really are right who actually need co floaters right and who are people who don't care less about whether we existed or not right so we found out that uh, freelancers independent professionals were the uh, and even within that creative people were actually a lot more uh, interested with our offering right uh anecdotally mm-hmm. let me take some examples right? there's actually a, a, we've had like people come and write uh sit and write uh, poems in in our cafes right uh, we've ha- we've had a, a tamil movie sc- script writer use our cafes uh, he was one of our uh, power mm-hmm. users so a lot of creative people found that um, uh, our offering was very interesting to them right because okay. they could get a unique ambience uh, right it is not a cookie cutter white walls like a traditional office right because they didn't fit themselves into a traditional office so they wanted the ambience they wanted to see other people they wanted to be socialized with other people so that they could observe and get inspired by all uh, all these characters who enter the cafe right so um, so if you found the creative people were quite a, quite, quite uh, uh, took on to our uh, offering at the same time we also found a lot of independent professionals to come to our offering because uh, independent professionals again did not have an office on their own so they would travel hmm. they would meet other people across chennai across the cities and uh, so they needed uh, like i mean like me right i was an independent professional or i was like more of a uh, one man army trying to uh, in my first startup i was doing that right so a lot of those one man okay. armies uh, lone warriors uh, needed uh, kind of to come to co-founders really well a lot of small startups right want to co-founder founder or co-founder founder and one developer kind of startups again to come to our model of uh, way of working right so a lot of these people happen a lot of very interesting use cases also came across uh, which uh, which we, i mean uh, which were like uh, uh, which kind of opened our vision on what go for to school eventually be right we are we are we are no way there yet uh, but uh, for example right uh, uh, one of the freelancers actually uh, uh, her name is janani so she used to she was a Uh, a business professional and she was working for a company that would translate uh, scientific journals from japanese to english and english to japanese right so this is what she used to do before okay. um, her daughter was born right and uh, since mm-hmm. her daughter was born and since she was away from her family and all that uh, she actually quit had to quit her job and uh, she uh, stopped working right and then J- janni's daughter was now going to school right and she, one day she dropped J- her daughter in school and went to one of the cafes where we had a small ten card and she read that she could book the space for 25 rupees per hour and that's when she realized okay. that hey I could, i could put my daughter in school come to this cafe open my laptop and work for 2 3 hours when my daughter is at school right and then close the laptop mm-hmm. go pick her back and go back home right so rather than shuttling back and forth she started to do this right? and this this uh this was like kind of liberating uh, eye opener event for us right and since that uh, mm-hmm. uh, it is not really addressing existing freelancers but a lot of people who today think new that ideas they can't, right yeah. they can't they can't work because they they had home commitments and they had family commitments right they could like they could uh, figure out a way to work because there is always pockets of time where they can step out and work right rather than kind of devoting it but jandi cannot do a 95 shift right she can't she can't work right, yeah. right? but she can certainly do 2 hours 3 hours spread across the day right um, yeah, so that is one very yeah. uh, eye opening uh, interaction with the customer that we had another very eye opening uh, interaction with the customer uh, was like one of the doctors uh, she was actually a uh, uh, acupuncture uh, uh, specialist right and she used to work mm-hmm. in uh, dr ramachandra uh, hospital in poru uh, again one uh, one outs one one area of chennai right for non chennai listeners out there right and uh, the moment she got to know about gofford is what she does like hey rather than making my patients come from one part of the city to poru let me go to them right so she booked our con- uh, conference room that we had in alwar pet again one of the central mm-hmm. districts of chennai and uh, she said hey uh, saturday i'm going to be here from 3 to 6 i'm going to be here so my patients and her, her patients were predominantly elderly people right uh, mm-hmm. uh, who had uh, who had issues and who were getting uh, addressing those challenges through acupuncture right she said hey i'm here i'm going to i have an on demand clinic uh, i'm going to be sitting here in this conference room between 3 to 6 pm you come and meet me there right so she was able to move she was able to move her clinic from one part of the city to a, to another part of the city right and get access to this clinic mm-hmm. on a non demand basis right? and she was a young professional so uh, when i was talking to her she told me hey i can't afford to set up my own clinic right i'm i'm too young in the uh, professional uh, career of mine i can't afford to spend uh, uh, and uh, like uh, 
and have my own clinic i i need to gain experience by working at the hospital right but that doesn't mm-hmm. stop me from serving my patients uh, through coflotus right i can set up a clinic and i can meet my patients there right so it, it was kind of a mm-hmm. uh, again another epiphany moment for me right in the sense that uh, space is such an integral part of uh, it it is it at one 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 end of the spectrum it is a liberating you have space you can you can imagine things with it at the same time not having a space is so constraining right uh, i can't yeah, yeah. people cannot imagine going to a 9 to 5 job people can't imagine going uh, going to hey i can't travel i have my a young kid at home or have an elderly person to take care at home i can't travel i can't be away for 8 9 hours at a stretch right so all these yeah. the regular office and the regular way of thinking about work is so constraining right for many people right that we don't sometimes we don't realize that right and and, and being a part of coforce and working with all these customers kind of made me realize that uh, this remote giving space on demand is so much more liberating for people right it is not just about a space to go and work it's about reimagining uh, their own professional careers in, in ways that they've never been able to do before definitely reimagining uh, the way that people are using a space constraint is there for every business but for people who are starting new uh, it's a big thing that you are solving correct very nice yeah uh, what's the tech ecosystem involved in your company and for for both the products and the services that you are offering so uh, so tech is a huge part of what we do right like uh, you you talk about us as an airbnb right so so we in, in similar to that uh, we yeah. uh, airbnb tech is a huge part of the whole ecosystem right uh, tech is is the True. entry point of the experience but then going to the actual physical space is the is the actual experience right is the is the uh is the is the how do you say it? the moment of truth right so uh, for us tech is a huge part of it because again mm-hmm. to say uh, like uh, like how you cannot imagine a uber without technology you can't imagine an uber without technology right you can't uh, you can't like True. imagine calling somebody and say hey is my is a cab near me right you need an app to kind of find out a cab and and, and book the app similarly uh, since we yeah. we also work on helping people providing drop in on demand uh, workspaces hey you can you can book a space and be there in 20 minutes right you can start using the space in 20 minutes right mm-hmm. that's the promise that we give them right and for that whole thing to happen there has to be a smooth uh, process uh, that's like held by technology enabled by technology right so we have uh, for example we have a customer app uh, that people can download from the google play store or app app store right and for people who are not comfortable installing an app we also have a web version through which they can discover search filter and book book a, a go for a space uh, some uh, on the same side we have a partner app where uh, space partners uh, uh, kind of maintain real time inventory of the space right tell about the availability of the space to us and to our customers right confirm the bookings right collect uh, and the technology helps us collect the payment collect feedback right and do the whole closed loop uh, uh, of of the whole engagement with the customer right so technology is huge part of uh, what we do uh, uh, so so again we since we have gone so we, since we are we are primarily the, the on demand office space uh, technology is and will remain an integral part of what we offer because without that we can't imagine something that you can book yeah book for the next moment and be there of course you should be having a very big team handling all this tech ecosystem uh, behind providers of the space and also the uh, technology so how big is your team on the ground today and you will be surprised and even i would be surprised that we are a five member team right very very small for <laughs> including me and my co-founder so it's like uh, uh, okay so hands on deck uh, there are like five people but obviously uh since we believe uh, in remote working and we believe in gig economy, gig economy in, in the large sense uh we mm-hmm. i would say we are a five uh, employee company but then at any point in time we we have like four to five freelancers helping us out right obviously not on a full time okay. basis right so so we have a designer who's on a, uh, who's a freelancer uh, we have an seo mm-hmm. person who's a freelancer we have a, a digital marketing person uh, who's who's a freelancer so we work with a lot of freelancers uh right and, and and because we uh, not only for not only does it uh, does it help us save a lot of money at the same time it uh, it also gives us a flexibility to work with the best of the talent without having to employ them and and uh, uh, kind of make them part of your team right so we work with a lot of lot of freelancing talent from across india again uh, uh, so 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 today we i would say like we are a nine member team of which like five are employees plus four freelancers right so that's that's and and two interns right so uh, so that's that's basically the team uh, uh, i would uh, we have today uh, before covid we were uh, roughly around 14 people uh, but we had to downsize because covid during the 9 months or during the year uh, it was actually uh, uh, 
uh, not possible for us to sustain at that uh, level right so we had to give some furlough to people and uh, some of the people decided to do other things with life because of covid uh, so we had to uh, uh, bid them farewell but today uh, we are kind of picking momentum again and the fact that we had already invested our time in building the technology before covid happened and uh, the fact that we had we were super focused on doing what we do we are able to manage whatever we are doing with a very small team so uh, yeah it so, is yeah for a for a business which is running across 21 cities right as you mentioned and right. uh, five plus four member team is not a big team it must be challenging to 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 actually run the entire show the truth is like uh, i mean covid has also taught us to be extremely be frugal with our spends right uh, mm-hmm. uh, and again i'll elaborate more uh, when we talk about i mean i think when when, when uh, at, an, at a later point in time the, in the podcast but but basically um, uh, very uh, every rupee matters so you kind of see where what is the right sure. investment so you kind of uh, uh, try to make the maximum out of what you have in hand in terms of both people resources and uh, money as a resource you establish the tech uh, just b- way before the covid uh, there should always be a grip on the overall uh, tech ecosystem when it comes to the end to end architecture so you are a kind of both a business person and the architect uh, for the whole product or uh, is it a mix of you and your co-founder uh, so uh, uh, i would say like uh, of the two of us so shrivatsan also comes from a tech background right he's he's been a developer he's mm-hmm. been everybody right but uh, the, mm-hmm. the 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 realization that we both have is like uh, i know that he's busy, he's good at operations and he's good at sales and he's look he's good at mm-hmm. uh, finance uh, and uh, he knows that i'm good at tech and i'm good at marketing and i'm good at uh, uh, customer engagement and customer experience and things like that right so we clearly know that hey uh, uh, you're good at that so you're better managing that i'm good at this i'm better managing this right? so we have a very complementary com- com- complementary kind of a role right while while both of us can do okay. each other's work right in case he is down one day i can yeah. obviously augment whatever he is doing and, and vice versa can happen right so he equally interface interface mm. the developers and gives them ideas on how to do things right but at any point in time we know uh, who's on who's the driver on the wheel for a particular aspect of business right so i am on the driving wheel when it comes to okay. technology architecture and uh, and, the, and and implementing all of that so and i'm i'm from a tech background uh, whereas uh, he had moved into the operations and sales and uh, that kind of a background in his corporate career right so so because so we kind of Uh, smoothly manage the uh, so it, uh, and there are there are a few things that fall in the in in between these two and we uh, it will not it will be funny to say but we sometimes we toss the coin and say hey who fixes this who fixes this up okay can <laughs> okay. you pick it up they said got it got it any any challenging such instances that happened where uh, decision making was so cru- crucial but uh, you faced challenges in uh, moving further be it operations or r&d or the product uh, that you are dealing with see for example i mean covid uh, covid uh, so we i mean uh, the first year was a struggle like i said right because we ourselves did not know uh, who are we building this for what is the real value proposition is this even a business is it even worth uh, the time investment that we were we were we were doing and all that right so the first year was a, a ch- struggle uh, the second year was actually we were actually seeing the we were able to see the fruits of our investments coming through and we were we were able to expand into other cities uh right in the second year and the second year and after that a lot of uh uh media started to notice us so uh, a lot of people started to spread the word uh, referral marketing happened quite extensively in fact i would say like even today uh, i can confidently say 50% of our users are referred by somebody else right uh, so okay. so word of mouth uh, is still a huge part of our our inbound uh, leads that we get or inbound customers that we get right so um, mm-hmm. so that used to uh, so uh uh and at, at just when we got a good handle of things and we knew how to take the business forward is when covid happened as well right uh so mm-hmm. or or before that uh, the we work debacle happened uh so we when we work debacle happened the entire co-working industry was looked looked at in a, in a in a bad light and people started doubt uh co-working as as a mainstay they said it's a fad it's going to go away right it's burning through cash and all that so it's kind of so one uh, one uh, one incident that hit us a little bit was the we work debacle uh, then when we uh, when we were we were coming out of that and uh, we were trying to kind of uh, raise the head again then covid again happened right uh, and uh, this uh, so that i mean and i would say like uh, that shook up covid 
shook up things for many businesses right and we are no exception to to that right uh, mm-hmm. so now what we've uh, what it has done covid has really done is like uh, the nine months we were actually uh, like any any entrepreneur out there any founder out there we 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 couldn't anticipate or we couldn't predict when this is going to get over right uh, because the government would say mm-hmm. 10 days lockdown 15 days lockdown then a partial lockdown a full lockdown then so so we were constantly uh, recalibrating our business plans for that right uh, what is my projection right so every month the projection would change because we can't open today right we had to open one month later right we can't op- start operations today you had to postpone it or bang bangalore would be down chennai would be up then chennai would be locked down again uh, suddenly like yeah. uh, mumbai would go on a lockdown so we couldn't calibrate ourselves so we were st- constantly uh, recalibrating i would say for that okay seven months of uh, lockdown right uh, but then uh, right around august is when uh, all of us in fact not just me and my co-founder uh, i would again the other, other fact that i would pride in my pride in uh, for what we have created is is a team that's like a super uh, contributive to ideas right? so we uh, it's collect uh, it's a very small team so collective decisions don't take we we believe in taking collective decisions and uh, getting uh, getting everybody to align to that uh, Uh, calling to the right so so in august and september is when we opened up uh, the whole discussion again and say hey who do we want to be after covid right uh, do we want sure. to be uh, a uh, provide b a b to c player and offer spaces to freelancers and all that or do we focus on companies and companies are now uh, thinking about remote right when we started off companies were not thinking about remote work from anywhere but now uh, with covid every company whether it is infosys or tcs or cognizant or the startups uh, uh, or established startups like insta mojo everybody is looking at uh, remote and and work from anywhere as as the way to forward right so who, which should we mm-hmm. focus on right obviously both both were interesting both were viable business models right uh, to focus on b2c or b2b but then we decided that uh, b2b is what we going to we going to focus on post covid right and i think we uh, mm-hmm. we we took a right decision uh, in august and and uh, we've seen you seen that play out really well for us uh, in 2021 right but it was a very hard decision sure. to take because um, uh, the last two and a half years freelancers and creative professionals and all these people is what made go through us what it was right so uh, kind of deciding sure. that we will be more of a b2b player was a little bit of a uh, tough decision to make right uh, a tough pivot to the, make and all of that but i think uh, we are happy but the other uh, other uh, big i uh, think that uh, 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 that we are happy that we are able to do it do it with this pivot is that now goflood is is equally about serving people in suburbs of tier 1 cities and tier 2 cities and tier 3 cities as we are in tier 1 cities of india right uh, because employees of companies okay. have gone to their native places right they've gone to their hometowns they've gone to uh, different parts of the world i mean different parts of india for sure yeah. right? so we we are now serving employees of companies in trichy salem in in indore in ahmedabad okay. in calcutta in in visakhapatnam vizag mysore uh, trivandrum uh, right kanyakumari you name it right so so we, now we are all about helping um, uh, team members uh, stay where they are right? across yeah across wherever okay. they are right? so so it's it's a new phone freedom that employees of companies are having today that they've never never had it right and being a part of that yeah. entire ecosystem of providing the freedom is something that's super thrilling for us to be doing right now true you opted a different way of scaling from tier tier 1 to the other uh, tier 2 and tier 3 cities no there's no there's no there's no solution there right there's no there's no uh, tier 1 uh, tier 2 to tier 3 there's no solution for uh, a workspace uh, is is not is is a problem that's yet to be solved right because previously like i mean hmm. you you got an it job you had to be in bangalore right you had a you had a startup job you had to be in hyderabad or you had to be in delhi or you had to be in bangalore right so a talent kind of migrated like uh, <laughs> into these tier 1 cities right but now they don't have to do that right? they can be wherever they are and continue to work for the world's best companies from uh, kanyakumari right so you don't have to be in chennai or bangalore yeah, true, true. Yeah. that's a very good point yeah so coming to the information on funding how did you manage because now you you manage to build it and you managed to actually scale out in the other countries other sorry other cities also so how was the initial fundings were managed is it bootstrapped or do you do you try to bring in any external funding yeah so we were uh, we were predominantly bootstrapped till the first two years of, of co-founders so it was me and my co-founder mm-hmm. uh, uh, funding the company uh, right 
uh, and uh, right around around that time when we also uh, uh, kind of figured out uh, what GoFooters is and what we should be doing with it is when we kind of started to share this with some of our friends and and uh, uh, a couple of our friends kind of contributed as friends and family funding round right so we opened up that round in mm-hmm. uh, in in, in 2019 and uh, we had a couple of our friends contribute uh, 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 to to the to the to the kitty of co-founders right and that's how that's that's what mm-hmm. uh, helped us come uh, till 2020 right so the, and again we've been very frugal even before uh, we've been very frugal as friends but with covid we've been even more frugal so we we still are uh, uh, primarily running on uh, uh, revenue generated by the business At the at one end, and and at the same time, uh, the friends and family uh, money that we've had, we have not done uh, mm. a, a formal series of uh, 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 equity funding yet, right? Uh, we predominantly, mm-hmm. I would say, like friends, family, and and colleagues, we have taken money from more people uh, who know us personally and who uh, who uh, who trust us more than uh, our business acumen or our technology uh, acumen, right? So that's how we've been mm. predominantly been running, and uh, obviously since. we were revenue generating from day 2 of december 12 2017 the idea was there december 14 we were already making revenues right so the revenue was always there so that was that was that was able to fund a lot of our efforts right so that's how we are still running so how long it actually took for you to actually start seeing the revenue coming uh, in a comfortable way in a comfortable way i think i would say like it took us like 8 months uh, to kind of get to a revenue where uh, you could uh, you could mm-hmm. offset some expenses with that revenue right uh okay nice right? because like uh, it 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 was like i said at right? the first one year was a very slow uh, paced uh, uh, journey for us right so it if we were not a viral thing like suddenly like everybody is talking about covid it didn't happen and uh, uh, so it was a it was a slow uh, pay, uh, curve i would say uh, right around 8 months into the operations we the revenues were comfortable enough for us to offset some people's salary or some people in the marketing efforts and so on and so forth right um uh, and uh, okay. right around covid is when we actually were uh, uh, we were actually hitting break even uh, at that point in time right which means that we didn't need external funding uh, to uh, survive right so i would say right around october of 2020 sorry not 2020 2019 is one where where we were uh, very close to break even and we didn't break even around february okay. of 2020 if, or if january of 2020 we, we actually hit break even right uh and uh, feb 2020 we were actually looking at making uh, uh starting to make profits uh, with, with go for us right uh, but then covid happened like i said right so and and then which meant that the whole thing had to be rethought through uh, now we are again in the uh, but again jan 2021 has been super um, uh, game changing for us again uh, 2020 was by and for, by and large a washout year uh, for us as it has been to many companies mm-hmm. uh so 2021 mm-hmm. jan 2021 onwards we've onboarded like hundreds of companies uh who are now looking okay so we are working going forward okay okay you started in a nice uh, frugal way and uh, you managed to pull it through uh so what formula of uh, sales and marketing has actually worked for you because you started with bootstrapping and it's all your money so how have you limited that you are not overspending but also reaching out to the customers that you uh, you want to get it yeah so like i said before ashok uh, Uh, our biggest marketing uh, success story if i had want to call it is the word of mouth marketing right so uh, I, even to till date i would say like 50% of our customers both b2c and b2b are referral sources right so we uh, so these are people referred by other people who have used and obviously liked the service and liked the product and hence are referring right so our our yeah. our, uh, our growth predominantly happened a lot of the growth happened via the uh, referral marketing channel uh but obviously when when we launched newer cities we had to do a little bit of performance marketing because like for example we were known in chennai but nobody knew in us and bangalore when we wanted to get in bangalore right i mean there's no mm-hmm. there's no referral that could happen when people don't know you so uh, in whenever we were launching we did a little bit of uh uh, uh paid marketing in those cities right uh, but today uh, uh, okay both for is it kind of a digital like ad agency or uh, f- uh, fb ads google ads kind of thing or uh, right. what way you i would say uh, our biggest uh, one Uh, i would say from the organic uh, what has helped us is seo right and uh, quora quora okay. answering questions relevant questions on quora helped us organically generate traffic to the website and mm-hmm. for strangers to understand what go for us yeah. right so organically a lot of lot of effort that we had put in earlier on into uh, seo and into uh, quora helped us right 
and uh, yes uh, i would say like google ads uh, helped us more so than fp ads uh, as in as in i would say like they were more uh, the conversion was better off for google ads than fp ads right uh, so we but we we have tried all kinds of uh, for ad marketing that right? we've done we've done twitter ads we've done fb ads we've done core ads but by mm-hmm. in, by and large uh, okay. uh, google ads have helped helped us more so than uh, fb ads oh. um but okay. today today we do very little of marketing i would say like outbound uh, uh, or we don't do performance marketing we do more of outbound sales because now we are into b2b spectrum mm-hmm. uh, so we do more of outbound uh, outreach and uh, uh, sales than than we do marketing but we do we do a little bit of inbound marketing through content and through uh, uh, through seo and all that right but uh, very little of uh, paid marketing uh, we do uh, the budget is very small so okay, again okay. again being very frugal with that the initial word of mouth also plays a big role yeah good so uh, you have already customers reach uh, across more than 20 cities in india so what are your further plans in terms of scaling your business uh, see again uh, so why uh, so i wouldn't i wouldn't confidently say that we are we are scaling in these 21 cities right 21 cities we have just onboarded mm-hmm. now right so it is always a struggle mm-hmm. it's always a scale challenge when you launch a new city right uh, uh because sure. like the people in that city don't know you right uh so you need to kind of start start the whole process like you need to kind of establish your foot there you need to so since we are a marketplace we need to get the supply in those cities before you can uh look for demand in those cities so so it's definitely been uh, uh so every city we add you uh you kind of figure out you kind of find you in your playbook for launching a new city and apply it for that city and kind of try to see what what to work it out right so uh, certainly like that that scaling and adding and and the only way we can scale today and like i said right covid has really given us an opportunity to kind of help people not only in tier 1 cities but also in tier 2 and tier 3 cities so which means that uh, our our scope of expansion is kind of gone 100x right previously uh, expansion would mean like from chennai i would go to a mumbai from mumbai i'll go to an ncr or from there i'll go to like the tier 1 cities right that metro cities and tier 1 cities but now uh, today we have demand coming from uh, impal and from uh, kanyakumari and from uh, Trivandrum and uh, Trishur and uh, Ubli okay. and Darwad, right? So you 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 kind of nice. uh, you kind of uh, yeah. the whole like they say that the whole world is your oyster, right? But now the whole of India is is our, <laughs> is our marketplace, right? But then it, true, it's true. good it's good in that sense that the the scope of the business is is, is gone gone hundred x now, right? With the B two B payment, right? But at the same time, it is also a, a marketing uh, uh, challenge, right? But how do you make people know about you in those cities? right how do you make uh, yeah i guess now you have a different uh, challenge of how do you meet your demand now now the demand is more because of the situation we are in right post covid yeah exactly right and nice. and we continue to continue to kind of uh, struggle with the challenge uh, uh, that people have right and which is a fair challenge because people are not companies and heads of companies are not still sure whether they should have yeah. their employees work from home or they should give some option whether it's safe for people uh, for people to come out while while they have challenges uh with work from home right all of them have uh mental health challenges they have uh, uh overworking challenges their companies they have attrition challenges uh they have employees mm. uh, retention being a challenge right uh, uh employee teams teams being being able to collaborate is becoming a big challenge for companies right so so the sure. work from home uh, you're you're forced to do that right you're it's not nobody i mean no company would love to do it right uh as that's the only way to only pet they would do right they they want to have True. some solution to that right but then uh, companies do have to uh, keep employees health and wellness on top of everything right so uh, yeah. and this new covid uh, surge of cases is again making people think about it again right so 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 it's it's a it's a it's a so it's a, it's a process right so at one point one point you have vaccination happening on the other side you have newer cases coming up and all that so it's, it's a, so leaders do need to weigh in all their options and take the decision uh, that that works for their company but then a lot of companies are taking this call now to kind of provide because they are now uh, mm-hmm. the, the biggest fear that they have is like uh, is that uh, this covid pandemic has led to another mental health pandemic uh, within their employee mm-hmm. base right and and they are seeing that culture is being uh, culture is eroding because when you are at on board a new team member that team member is remote and they don't know what your company is all about right they don't know how your company operates right yeah. 
uh, when you onboard a remote True. team member, right? So culture is getting eroded at many companies. Uh, collaboration, specifically companies yeah. that uh, they 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 kind of are the foundation is collaboration. For example, a product company, a tech product company, or a creative company like a marketing agency, right? So their enter so their their foundation is collaboration of team members, right? People coming together and delivering a product or delivering a creative campaign or delivering. Uh, 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 I mean, it's it's a collaborative effort, right? We are not individual players, right? So these companies are the ones mm-hmm. that are struggling a lot, and these companies are the ones that are actually embracing the Coforce way of working because uh, they do see that the work from home is not, is is like the more they kind of settle in doing that, they they go down a slippery slope. Mm-hmm. Yeah, true. Nice, uh, wonderful. Uh, now moving on to the next segment of this episode, uh, rapid fire questions. Let me just bring it down. So what's the best thing that happened to you this month? Uh, the best thing that happened to me this month, I would say, is like uh, one vaccination started, right? Uh, okay, right? yeah. So uh, that is a huge relief to everybody, right? I mean, every Indian out there, true, uh, true. Right? So it's a huge relief that uh, uh, there is a solution uh, that's hap- that's there out there, right? So that's number one. Yeah. Uh, number two, I would say like... Uh, 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 while while it's while the cases have been a, a dampener, uh, the increase in cases in Kerala, Karnataka, and Maharashtra have been a dampener. Uh, but people are uh, are realizing that, uh, or companies are realizing that uh, uh, it's been a year, right? So it's almost becoming a, a, the anniversary of lockdown, right? Uh, it's going to be like in, in <laughs> yeah. a few days from now, right? Uh, really? So uh, companies are uh, taking a decision now, right? So it's been so they know that they can't continue with this. Forever, right? So we have seen that a lot of companies that were in a limbo of, hey, should we extend work from home for more? What should we do? Should we bring people back to office? So decisions are being made uh, now, right? Now that uh, the anniversary mm-hmm. of the lockdown is here, and people want to, people have realized that uh, they have to make a stance and they have to move in a particular direction. So decisions are being made, right? Uh, albeit uh, mm-hmm. cautiously, but decisions are being made right? because. Uh, from August till January of 2020, it was like almost like a limbo, right? Uh, people did not know. Yeah. People did not want to decide, right? They didn't. Uh, they, so, so the early early adopters of early uh, movers have started to make a decision. Now the now the, the curve is picking up for the people who are in the middle of the spectrum are making decisions. Yeah, so this is a good thing. M- more of a, yeah, the more of acceptance is coming up. Yeah, yeah. nice. So, uh, which is your favorite subject in school? I would say physics was my favorite subject, and okay. it still remains to be. I would say, right? Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> nice. So, what's the book that you have read very recently? Book or article, and which one you liked it? See, I uh, today I'm a more of a podcast list. Sorry, I would say an audible listener than reading. Uh, I'm not okay. reading. I don't read books. I uh, still some for some mm-hmm. reason like uh, reading. Uh, reading, I equate reading to falling asleep <laughs> while while having the book in hand. <laughs> So I'm more of a I, I listen to audio books more often now than okay. uh, ever before. So um, mm-hmm. so the one that I'm listening to is like the, the hard thing about hard things is the is the book that I'm listening okay. to right now. Uh, so it talks about uh, being in the trenches as a founder and, and and really doing the hard things, cracking cracking the hard things uh, uh, from all sorts of things. Right and and uh, and COVID has been a hard thing to crack. So so I'm looking at I'm yeah. reading that book with a, quite a bit of uh, uh, interesting things. I think the but I would say like the the, the books that have changed my uh, approach to entrepreneurship I would say uh, are uh, the Purple Cow uh, and mm-hmm. and Zero to One right uh, so okay these yeah books, Zero to One yeah. has been I would say the biggest influencers of my way of thinking and way of approaching uh, problem solving and being an entrepreneur I would say those those books two books have had the biggest impact and okay. I listen to a lot of podcasts so I don't only draw to books. So I listen to a lot of podcasts on remote working and uh, on marketing, uh, on entrepreneurship. So you are also an audio person. Yeah, I think I've become more of an audio person. Uh, see, as an entrepreneur, mm-hmm. I was like, I, I, a lot of my time was in traveling. I was, I, I, like I told you, right? And that's how, that's how even GoPros happened because I was traveling and I was riding yeah. my bike across, right? So, so uh, those like an hour of traffic, uh, listen to a podcast while driving. Excellent. Yeah. 
yeah yeah true true that's how even actually anyone who is traveling anyone who is traveling more i guess they will all eventually end up being a more of a podcast person and that's how i also be, being in bangalore traffic yeah i became more of an audio person yeah so that's the yeah, yeah, right. that's what traffic does to you yeah yeah a positive side of traffic and, and when you are driving you can't obviously fall asleep so you have to keep yourself awake with something interesting to do so true 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 nice when do you hit bed and what time you wake up and how does your first few hours of your morning look like so this has been a little bit of uh, uh, i wouldn't say i'm i'm a more of a night person so my mm-hmm. my best hours are after 12 o'clock uh, in the night uh, so okay. 12 mm-hmm. to 3 is my my used to be my my most productive time right uh, so i get up late so i, I don't i don't i'm a lazy guy uh, the moment i go to bed not the easiest of person to be woken up so i wake up like at 8 o'clock 8:30 a.m. so i've been a more of a late night person and and a late i get up late uh, but things have changed a little bit uh, now uh, with my son so i i have to put him to bed early and uh, so things have changed a little bit so i i get up a l- little early nowadays go to bed early so 12 11:30 12 am in the bed and get up around 7 and uh, start working so the early early hours of the day is like uh, is is my to do list time i go through uh, uh my list of to dos and uh, reprioritize a little bit right so i'm i, I mean this is a habit mm-hmm. that i've i'm trying to form so i wouldn't say i've been uh, practicing it for quite some time it's a habit that i'm trying to form to kind of get up and prioritize your mm-hmm. day for, for the day and and start my work that way uh, uh mm-hmm. and the first things that i do after i do that is to look at uh, uh some uh, like for example look at how many i mean the website traffic the previous day right how many bookings happened the previous day and all that so so you you kind of draw your energy from a positive hey yesterday we got 10% more traffic <laughs> to the website or we had like more bookings this day so i look at some of the numbers that kind of give you some uh, motivation right uh, that's that's how okay. you can say okay nice so how is your formula for uh, uh, keeping in connect with your mentor and uh, how do you make sure that your mentors are available to you when you need them most yeah i think see the, the uh, see first first one foremost is like so i i i, I would say go for us wouldn't even have happened if i have not if i had not spoken to my mentor sukumar right so i, I mean i owe him big time uh, for me being here where i am right apart from that uh, a big salute to one of the other mentors called ramesh kumar who's been truly i mean who who's kind of uh, given a sane sense of thinking when things were not going right right so uh, you need somebody to kind of keep you keep you straight and keep you honest and keep you uh, motivated when when things are not going the way they are going for you right so first and foremost the biggest way you can pay back uh, your mentors is to kind of respect their time and respect their advice and uh keep them posted right because keep them posted on why mm. whether see see and uh, all the mentors again there are mentors who i'm talking about my mentors right let me not generalize this but uh kind mm. of hey you told me this i've done this this is what the outcome of that is there because remuneration right they 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 uh, that's that's you even took their thoughts seriously right and even if you said i'm not doing this because of this reason right is 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 that mm-hmm. what they expect so kind of valuing their time showing respect to uh, uh, their inputs and their guidance right and being truthful right you like going to a mentor and talking to them is like going to a doctor and talking about uh, your health issues right you have to be open with them and go thread bare and uh, expose yourself right uh, so getting comfortable to expose yeah. yourself and somebody in front of somebody is it takes time right and you can't do this with every mentor right so uh, i would say yeah. like choosing a mentor is is act as complicated or as important as choosing your co-founder or your team members right you, you have to choose the person who you can actually expose yourself right, to right and and uh, you're comfortable doing that right uh, and and you can't do this with everybody you can't do this with uh, everybody who comes and claims that they can mentor you right uh, it's been that right so that that's how things have been right and and i think uh, just being respect to, respectful to them respectful to their time and uh, going back and updating them what has happened with you what's happened to the input that they gave you and whether it's working not working and just surrender yeah. right hey hey i i'm i'm stuck here bail me out right is mm-hmm. just surrender to yeah. your mentor and tell them that you are stuck here and 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 not be egoistic about you know i know how to get out of this right? so sometimes you have to kind of go hey i don't know i don't know what how to come out of this problem help me right 
um, mm. is the biggest service that you can do to yourself and to your better yeah yeah nice wonderful so for people who wanted to start off something own having big ideas but afraid to begin with what is one suggestion that you would like to give i would say like after covid right uh, my only my biggest savior so far right uh, when things have gone go wrong or things have gone things have not gone the way that you want right and entrepreneurship like i mean it's no nobody uh, nobody is going to claim that uh, entrepreneurship or running a startup is, is going to be a it's going to be a positive it's going to be a bit of roses right nobody is going to claim you that right and if you if you jump into mm-hmm. entrepreneurship thinking that it's going to be better for roses then you are probably the biggest fool out there right uh, so know that you are going to jump into a hot bed and uh, i mean entrepreneurship has been compared to many things right jumping out of a cliff or jumping into an ocean without knowing swimming so it's been compared to many things and all of it is true right and you need to know that before mm-hmm. uh, before jumping in right but then once you have jump, jumped in i think the the only question that has saved me Uh, uh from going mad or being very dejected or disappointed is like is the only question that i ask myself is like what is the worst that can happen right <laughs> that asking myself that question hey what is the okay covid has happened what is the worst that can happen right now that you are on lockdown what is the worst that can happen right you're not going to die true right uh you can always come back right so i need to put this i need i need to put this on hold for 3 months fine i mean that's the what the you're not going to like things are not going to like things are not going to like uh, you're not going to the worst you're not going to die for for sure right uh, you, so the moment you ask your question you ask a question what's the worst that can happen right you're you're not making profits you're making uh, you you're burning money right so the moment yeah. you ask a question what's the worst i'm i'm willing to accept right and you you kind of say this is the worst that i can accept right i i can't accept anything below this right you know the boundaries that you have right and you will live with those boundaries and being frugal is another thing that i would say right because if we were not frugal uh, many of our competitors died through covid right? they they don't exist hmm. today right a uh, lot of because i mean it's not it's not easy right it's not uh, so if you if you are like and, and suddenly you can't like if you are not frugal right if you are spending x lakhs a month you can't suddenly bring that down to x by 100 right uh because yeah. mo- momentum will step by step it's like a train right you you the fast train you can't stop it suddenly right uh, stopping it suddenly means you are derailing it right you, it's death right sudden death yeah. right so yeah. so being being very frugal from the very beginning uh is actually a good thing uh, right because not only to prepare for the worst right but it kind of uh, uh it kind of uh, uh helps you grow the business the right way because you can put tons of money and acquire customers right you can put an ad or you can run and promo and, and spend money and acquire customers but these customers are not going to be there if you stop the promo right so uh so hmm. being frugal and growing the business frugally is another advice i would give people and uh, third thing i would say like uh, start validating the idea start validating the problem pro- problem statement as early as possible because uh, like i said right i'm in coflooders uh, whatsapp number we ran this for four months uh so it was very slow to begin with right we didn't jump on the idea i think that's probably the best thing that we did right rather than jumping on the idea and kind of uh, uh validating 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 uh is how mm-hmm. we have been able to kind of constantly tweak the model uh, to make and make it work okay wonderful nice at the last question of this episode uh, for people who don't know about you and your company where should they look and uh, how do they find you a uh, very simple so the name of the company is go floaters uh, the spelling is g o f l o a t e r s and the story behind the name very simply is like uh, floaters uh, are people who don't believe in going to one office and being locked down in one location so we said go floaters mm-hmm. right so so it is a it is like it is a brand that would kind of be the voice for people who didn't believe in fixating themselves in one one place and say this is my place of work so so look out for go floaters on google or your favorite search engine uh if you search for us you will definitely be there and uh if the and what we do like i said we help uh people be uh we are the office for distributed teams so if you are a distributed team you are a remote team uh then uh, i think you would you would it would be worthwhile for us you, for you to check us out and see how we can help you uh, our apps are there on the google play store and apple app store so again go floaters search for it uh you can't miss it on on the google play store and apple app store i think you're fairly active on twitter and uh, linkedin not so much on insta or uh, facebook so you can also get us again by the go floaters handle on 
both in star sorry on linkedin yeah. and on uh, twitter yeah and i should say go floaters logo is uh, very very cool and catchy <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Great, great. Wonderful talking to you and it's pleasure having you and uh, getting all your insights uh, Shyam. Thank you for coming on. Thank you. Hey, thanks Ashok for having me. Uh I know you have a uh, famed list of uh, speakers that you've had before me. So I'm humbled uh, by the opportunity to be on your podcast uh, and I hope I live up to that expectations <laughs> and live up to the pedigree of other people that you've le- you've interviewed before. Uh so uh look I mean and thanks for doing this because uh stories uh every startup uh the story is worth to be told whether the startup is a super successful startup or 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 a not so successful startup but the story uh, is worth to be told because there are a lot of models and a lot of learnings to be learned from every startup story that's out there and thanks for capsuling and capturing it and capsuling it and giving it to people uh, to learn from because uh, unlike unlike many other things you can't document entrepreneurship and startup in a book right uh because every yeah. uh, as time changes the experience changes and so the only way is to capture stories of people and, and put it out there uh, and for other people who come down the line to kind of get inspired and learn from that so thanks for doing that uh, uh super important service for the entrepreneurial ecosystem of india so thanks for doing that thank you for all encouraging words uh, shyam it matters a lot uh, thank you so much Okay we are at the end of episode number 31 thank you very much Sham for coming on and sharing your experiences and to our listeners you can find out the episode summary in the description until we catch up soon with more exciting stories stay tuned be motivated thank you